welcome back to my channel. Today's video is different. When I said to you last week, I have no idea what I'm going to be filming, it's a surprise. I didn't realise <laughs> how big of a surprise it would be to me, to Stu, to us. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you will know this story, but I'm going to go into a bit more depth and um, let's get into the story of how we got a kitten. I've already got tissues at the ready because this story I cannot tell without getting all emotional and I can already feel myself getting that way because I've been looking at little videos and things we've had of her over the last two weeks. So let's rewind. Um, so two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago, I was sitting at home watching Below Deck or whatever trash I'm watching on TV. My partner is a guitar teacher and he teaches in this room. I'm using this room today because our living room is just so bright. Today it's really sunny. And behind you here is a big window and he has the window open for um, lessons because of COVID and stuff like that. And he came into me when he finished work at 9pm and was like, come and listen to this, it doesn't sound right. And there was a cat outside crying. And I said, oh, no, no, no. I know, he said, it's a little black cat. I said, oh no, I know that cat. When I go to the gym in the mornings at like 5.30, this cat's owner is in the gym and we cross paths. And I say, oh, your cat's waiting for you because the cat hears me and is like, meow, like screaming. Anyway, I said, oh no, 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 that's the lady down the road. And he said, oh, look, this, is that it? And looked and I saw this tiny little kitten and I was like, oh no, that isn't the right one. So Stu immediately got his shoes on and like went across the road and I, I followed thinking, oh God, what's going on here? Anyway, this teeny tiny little kitten came running over to us, screaming at the top of her lungs. And I could see she had a collar on. So I picked her up. We brought her inside. I sat her on my lap. And when I say she fell and like just collapsed and was like all lovey dovey, sleepy, she was purring. I looked at this collar. There was nothing on it just a flea it was just a flea collar but it looked old so i was like okay so we brought her in and like thank god i had a tin of tuna in the fridge i had some tuna mixed it up with some water she golloped it down and she was so skinny and you could see like all her little bones and her back was like bony and stuff and she was like growling and eating and purring all at the same time so I tried to get some photos of her and immediately put them on our local Facebook group. Like, is anybody missing a kitten? Does anybody, you know, know this cat? Um, Stu at this point walked around the streets to see if somebody was looking for it because when I say this kitten was small, she's tiny. Somebody had to have, she had to have escaped or run away or something. And the way that she was crying, it wasn't like, oh, give me attention. It was like, what is happening? Where am I? You know, it was like a cry for help. Anyway, um, Stu walked around the streets, couldn't find anybody. By this point, it's like 9.30 at night. So when he came back, I was like, right, let me go knocking on doors with the photos. So, I mean, thank God people around my way are quite trusting. So I was knocking on, knocking on people's doors. Everywhere I went, it was like, no, nope, don't recognise it. No, nope, I know all the people up this road. Nobody's got a kid. No, 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 no. Anyway, we saw this lovely couple and they were like, let me phone the local vets because they've got two cats. Let me phone the local vets that open 24 seven. They might be able to take a look at it and see if it's microchipped. It's like, brilliant. So we went to this vet. And when I say the vet was less than understanding, like it makes me angry to even think about this. And this is where I now will start to get a little bit fussy and a little bit upset. So bear with me. So we took the cat to the vet and the vet, as soon as we walked in, the lady on the phone said, this is a kitten, shouldn't be out, like way too young. When we walked through the doors with her, now bear in mind, I've got this cat like in my arms, so I haven't got anything to put it in. And the cat just was asleep on me. And this woman, this vet, took one look at her and was like, oh, that cat's way too old to, to, to be, um, that, that's not a kitten, that cat's like four months old, give it to me. So she just took the cat off me, wandered off not microchipped, she said, oh, it's fine. Put it back where you found it. Somebody will, will find its way home. This night, it was the 25th of October. It was cold, it was raining. 
We had to leave this kitten on a wall outside on its own. She was screaming, crying. When I say my heart was broken, both Stu and I were just like, we felt like utter dog shit. Like she sat in the middle of the road crying. Bearing in mind she's black, right? So you, if a car came past fast and you can probably hear now where this road is, there are cars constantly. And so I picked her up and put her on the wall outside of our house. She was like, leave it, leave it. I was like, I can't leave her in the middle of the road. Anyway, so I came in and when I say it took all the power in me to not scoop her up and bring her inside, I was like, couldn't discuss it. Anyway, after about 10 minutes, we couldn't hear her crying. So we were like, oh, okay, maybe she's fine. The next morning I went to the gym and you know, I go at like 5.30. So I was walking down the road like this, like listening. <laughs> And I couldn't hear anything. So I was like, oh my God, okay. The vet was right, happy days. Get home from the gym, get in the shower, get out of the shower. <sighs> About to put the TV on and outside of our bedroom window, I heard her crying. And I was like, oh my God, that poor baby has been out all night. Now I'm gonna play you my Insta story that I took the next morning. So when I say I was beside myself, you will see the pain. <laughs> I was beside myself. So I'm gonna put that in now. And then I'm going to come back. Last night was quite traumatic, guys. Um, Stu finished work and said that he could hear a cat outside. We found this little guy. Uh, took him in, fed him. Went knocking on doors. Couldn't find an owner. Uh, as you can tell by my bags, I haven't slept much. Um, I went to take him to the vets because once if it was chipped, because it's got a collar and everything, you can't see it's got a little collar. And um, vet said, oh, he's fine. He's four months old, just leave him where you found him. So me being me, and you see I'm crying now, left him. And after about 10 minutes, he couldn't hear him crying anymore. So I was like, oh, hopefully he's found his way home. Cause he was just on a wall screaming. This morning I went to the gym, listened out, couldn't hear anything. So I was like, great, he's fine. Then I got home, got in the shower, got out of the shower and I could hear him in our garden or in a garden near us. I can't take him in because I have nothing to look after a cat. Stu's home all day, he's teaching. I'm really hoping, yeah. genuinely don't know what to do. I messaged Stu, but I mean, I'm at work, he's got to work. We have nothing to look after a cat, we have no food. I fed it tuna when I got in last night, but genuinely, I have no idea what to do. I've put something on the local Facebook group to be like, can somebody please come and like get this cat or look after it. Um, the vet was quite pissed off and was like, oh, you just catnapped it. I was like, well, we haven't. It was outside screaming his little head off and like, poor little thing is tiny. Um, I don't know what to do, guys, help. What would you do? Um, I don't want to take it in because, uh, and buy loads of stuff because it's not my cat. Like it looks, it's fine. It's got a color, it's um, clean and bright eyed and you know, got a nice coat and everything outside all night it's been pouring rain all night <sighs> genuinely don't know what to do about this um answers on a postcard please see um i'm in bits i feel physically sick <laughs> um i just really really hope we get some good news today i will obviously keep you updated and um yeah uh let's see what happens i need to go do some work and sort my cat update what a morning it's been um Stu messaged me the cat was in the garden and I basically begged him to take him in because I can't actually bear it anymore. The fact that poor little kitten was outside all night just makes me feel physically sick. So um, our lovely neighbour has taken the cat while Stu is working. I have gone and got some cat food and some um, litter and everything and I will pick him up on the way home from my lovely neighbour. So I, will, I know she's watching so thank you so much. I can't stop crying. I'm an emotional wreck today. Honestly, I'm just like so happy now. And I've just seen a photo of Stu with the cat on his neck. So I think he's okay with it. So we're not gonna get divorced just yet, guys. Winning at life. So at this point, my lovely neighbors saw my Insta story and um, they, he said to me, oh my God, I've just seen it. I've messaged my wife. Um, if we find her, we'll, we'll bring her in. It's like amazing. Because at this point, Stu is still asleep. Um, I couldn't bring the cat in. We got nothing for a cat. I couldn't just be like, oh, here's Stu, I'm off to work. Um, so my lovely neighbours were looking at listening out and she said, I can't hear it. I, I don't know what's going on anyway. So at some point in the morning, it was about 11.45 or something, Stu sent me this photo saying, cat's out in the garden. 
I was like, for God's sake, that cat has been out all night. She's a baby. Please, for the love of God, bring her in. Now, Stu said, oh, our next door neighbours, they've got like um, a, a new lady that lives there. And he said, I think she might belong to her because she's new. The cat didn't move from where we put it. Clearly, the cat knows the area. And I was like, okay, fine. So I said, but if it doesn't belong to this woman, we have to take her in. Like just until we can find somebody to look after her or to, you know, or somebody comes forward or whatever. So anyway, he saw this lady with what she looked like she was carrying cat treats in her hand. So he went running out to her with the cat and was like, does this belong to you? And she was like, no, we fed it last night, but we don't know who it belongs to. So at this point, Stu sent me, this photo saying no it doesn't belong to her and when i say this photo melted my heart when i i've been with Stu for 17 years sorry i've been with Stu for 17 years when i say i have never loved him more than when he sent me this photo i am not even exaggerating sorry hang on <laughs> So he brought her in and I was like, right, I'm going to go and buy some cat treats and a litter tray and some litter. Uh, he was like, right, I'm teaching at four o'clock. Um, our next door neighbours said that they will take her until you finish work. So I was like, absolutely fine. So I messaged my neighbour. I was like, thank you, thank you, thank you. I will be around at 5.30. So at lunchtime, off I went, got some cat food, got some um got some litter blah 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 and um yeah and then when i got home she just came in i got the litter tray down i put litter in it she immediately went in the tray like the poor little thing had been waiting all this time to go to the toilet when i say she's clean like she's beyond um so the next day or so was quite a roller coaster <laughs> to say the very least so for backstory, Stu and I are both a bit um, responsibility phobes. We never wanted children. We've never had a pet. We never wanted a pet. We are not those people. We like to just live our lives, lay in, go on holiday, do whatever we want without any responsibility, any thought, any just, we just want to just do stuff. So we fully expected for somebody to look for this cat. So over the next couple of days, on the social medias, my neighbor put her on next door, we put her on Facebook, and um, I made up some found posters, which in the end I didn't put up because I'll explain. So it got to like, this was on the Wednesday. So we found her on the Wednesday, had to leave her outside. We took her in on the Thursday. So by Saturday, I worked from home on the Friday because I couldn't, I, I just, I was just distraught. I couldn't leave the cat and obviously poor Stu, just, I just didn't want to leave him with her all the time and all this stuff. Plus all she did was sleep. She was so tired. All she did was sleep. She was stressed. She was a little bit, you know, all over the place, but she was such a good natured little thing. Like she just cuddled up to you, wants to be close to you all the time. Very needy, very clingy, just followed her everywhere, crying. She wasn't used to eating. We put food down for her and she would eat it. We had to take her to it like she had no appetite. Um, so Friday I worked from home and we went and got some kitten food and we just, you know, got some more litter and all that kind of stuff. We went for walks that weekend all around the local area to look for posters that people might have put up or what have you. Nothing. Clearly, by this point, we're thinking this cat's been dumped because the way she was crying, it wasn't like I'm lost, I'm lost. It was like somebody had just left her there and she was like, what have you done? Where are you? Where's my mum? Because when I took her to the vet um, a few days later, uh, the vet told me she was 12 weeks old. So what the vet thinks has happened 
is somebody locally has a cat that they get pregnant for litters of kittens. Black cats apparently are the most likely to be abandoned or dumped or left as shelter because they're not as cute as tabby cats or ginger cats or what have you. Now, I'm gonna get Doris for you in a minute to show you how cute this cat is. And all the way through this, I've been setting little videos of things she does, but um, it was quite clear to us by like Sunday or Monday that we couldn't part with her. And there are many reasons why, mostly because she's so cute and the fact that she was just abandoned makes my heart break. People can be so cruel, like how can you leave a baby kitten in the street in at night just to be run over or lost? Like she's a little black cat, it's dark now. Like she would not have made it thank god she made it the one night like uh, how she did that is just beyond me so when i took her to the vet she had a few little fleas and things we gave her some flea stuff and i like, had a little bit of stuff to give her when we got home today or two later nothing she's absolutely stopped scratching she's not got any fleas now and now it's been nearly three weeks two and a half weeks and honestly i love her she's so cute she is my soulmate when it comes to horror movies. Because we got her um, on the 26th of October, I was not changing my Halloween plans. We sat on Halloween night and watched Annabelle together. And she was just like all eyes and just like all darting around everywhere. She loves a bit of horror. Last night we watched The Shining. I'll insert the video, <laughs> the bit where Jack Nicholson comes with the ax. This kitten was just like, ooh, she loves it. She just can't take her eyes off telly. And she also loves Selling Sunset and Below Deck. She loves all the hand gestures on Selling Sunset, all the arguments, like she's here for the drama. She's definitely my kind of girl. And at night, she just sleeps through. She sleeps under our bed. She doesn't bother us. She doesn't make any noise. She's getting really playful. Like she loves her little ball and like she loves a laser pen and she's starting to jump and run around and things. And she's really getting her little personality. Um, do you wanna meet her? Let me just go get her for you. One minute. This is Doris, isn't she? Doris. Sorry, sorry, she's looking out the window. Um, right behind you she's watching the cars now this little button is now well probably 14 15 weeks old and she's so much bigger than when we got her she's oh she's so cute she's got a proper little personality as you can see she's very bright eyed and bushy tailed she's getting very fluffy now she's getting her to be a proper hello a proper little cat and um, I don't know, I mean, how could anybody leave this outside? Just look at her. Look, isn't she beautiful? So yeah, she's our little girl and we have grown to love her massively over the last few weeks. So yeah, we now have a cat, which we did not expect to have. So um, we're all learning, we're getting into a little routine. Um, Going to the gym in the morning is fun. We had to get a night light in our hallway because we have black carpets. You cannot see this little dot um, around at night time. I, I accidentally tripped on her tail and kicked her once. <laughs> I was very, very sorry and she forgave me. Um, but yeah, we've got a little night light so we can see. There's a lady going in our house. Um, we've got a little night light so we can see her. Um, but she's absolutely no trouble. She's really funny and she's getting a proper little personality now. We are so happy she came into our lives. And people say that cats choose you. If that's the case, she definitely knew us two were a couple of mugs when she saw us because. Um, we love her and this is little doris so she's got her vaccinations next week we're going to get her microchipped when we get her spayed because she is a little girl so she's going to have to get her little tubes tied up and um so we're going to get her microchipped and uh yeah the journey begins so if you guys want any doris updates if you want to see any videos of her growing up and her progress let me know it could be a little feature every month or something and um yeah. Say hi, Doris. <laughs> so 
Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next week for another beauty related video. Take care guys, see you in the next one. Bye! Oh, and I forgot to mention that the first day we had her, well, the day after we had her, we went out for a walk at lunchtime to see if we could find any um, posters and things. And Stu had the brilliant idea of recording her while we were out because we wanted to see how she reacted, how she was by herself. Obviously, we'd only had her 24 hours. Now, there is a bit of crying in this video, so don't be alarmed. She's absolutely fine. At this point, she was quite needy and quite clingy and quite vocal about everything. Um, but this video, I think you'll find it very funny. And uh, yeah, she was absolutely fine. And she was a little trooper. But um, this video is hilarious. So enjoy. Thank you.